Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another League of Legends scrim. I am Rapid and this is going to be a game today between the members of Team Legion and TSM EVO. Now you might have heard a little bit about TSM EVO recently in, uh, I guess, well, recent news. Um, but uh, the news you may have heard is that Don't Mash Me has now replaced Afromu as the bottom lane AD carry for TSM EVO. Now, Mash Me, formerly of Mono Esports himself, uh, has returned to this team to do a few amazing things for it, and I re I'm really interested to see how his very first scrim with his new team will go out. Uh, I mean, a lot of you guys may have been fans of Don't Mash Me from a long time. I remember he uh, had a few petitions uh, to get himself back into the swing of pro gaming, and then wound up going to Monomaniac Esports, where he fostered along with the likes of Patoy, who did now go over to Team Dignitas. Now, now, uh, Mono's kind of been shedding players because they do make pretty darn awesome players. But uh, this time around, we're going to see Don't Mash Me uh, going bottom lane along with Natwin. And uh, I believe there's also a small inflection that I'm forgetting there with his uh, pronunciation of his name. But you know what? We're going to leave that up to Sona, who is now uh, probably considered one of the strongest... Uh, supports with her recent changes uh they lower the global cooldown on all of her uh her sounds i guess uh auras i'm just going to call them because they uh they do uh allow for a longer total cooldown for the move but a shorter cooldown in between the two and it looks like uh to start things off we're already going to see a little bit of interesting action you're gonna see a legion's wild turtle I Nubish and Demon Lull. I believe Wild, yeah, Wild Turtle is a sub as I believe their support is, or not support, their, uh, they have their top laners, so we're actually going to be watching him go mid. That's uh, something I am a little bit excited to see, just because, I mean, you don't see a AP mid Janna all that often. So, uh, we'll see exactly how that shapes up against the mid player uh, for, uh, for TSM Evo, and that will be Salsa going mid lane Pantheon. It just released an absolutely incredible uh, Vladimir mid guide that's, uh, well, besides incredible, also really freaking good. However, instead of Vladimir, he's going to be going mid lane Pantheon. And uh, to sort of uh, line up with the way that people thought things were going to go uh, during the picks and bans, we're actually going to have a little bit of a change. Looks like Mashby's going to flash back towards his turret. Will he be able to get out of here? No, the last auto attack from Demon Low will pick that up. Wild Turtle will get himself away there and I'm not sure how exactly cheesy this is but when you put three people <laughs> in the top brush and jib them when they walk into lane that's definitely something I have uh, sort of dreamed about accomplishing I've only done it once but uh, awfully effective uh, play there by Team Legion so uh, Nat's gonna be chilling up here over Steven Law and I Nubish and uh, this is gonna be a relatively uncomfortable situation as once they do pop their way up towards this turret that's gonna give them a lot of uh, poking uh, power but uh, as that first kill did go on to a vein actually gave assists to both Tarek and Sona not Sona but Janna and so that's gonna be uh, kind of intriguing and now Cruiser the Bruiser will be going up against Salse mid lane and this may be a player he's a little bit unfamiliar with going up against now Loud Mortis is actually going to get the ice ball flash over now who did auto attack the dragon it was in fact Skarner who I believe hit it with an AoE as he flashed over the wall so that's a little bit unfortunate but uh, that means that Loud Mortis going jungle Nunu is actually going to uh, have a little bit of a buff to his his own jungle and by one buff I mean two as uh, that is actually double buffs on Loud Mortis. Now uh, if we go ahead and check out exactly how things are transpiring top lane now it's just Demon Lull as Tarek has just returned uh, and is gonna go ahead and drop a ward in the tri brush and uh, Demon Lull actually dodging most of Don't Mash Me's skills so uh, like I said, I'm really interested to see how Don't Match Me does fare in his uh, relatively new uh, matchup or team lineup here. And uh, I don't know. I think he definitely has some things in store for us today. Now, Cruiser the Bruiser, mostly known for being, well, a popular streamer and also a very popular top laner he, as he is pretty good at this game. He's sitting at about 2350 elo at the moment and uh, definitely on his way up after a few of the last performances that he's had. Now, he probably hasn't laid necessarily against Salse top lane unless, you know, you're discussing some solo, solo queue shenanigans. But with the most recent Rumble rework, it's not really a rework, it's a bug fix. There used to be a bug where his Flame Spitter didn't uh, proc all of the uh, auto or all of the attacks that it was supposed to. Unstoppable X is actually waiting here in the brushes. Is he going to be able to jump onto Cruiser the Bruiser? Yes, he will forcing the flash almost immediately 
coming out of Rumble. Now top lane, actually bottom lane, a lot of damage going on in Wings of Death. He's gonna get one more auto attack to proc the red buff to pick up the kill on Wild Turtle. Loud Mortis, however, is there for the follow-up revenge. And uh, I don't know, man, just kills going off all over across the map, which is slightly redundant. But uh, nonetheless, I don't even know how to go up, like, discuss the moves uh, that the players are, are, are accomplishing just because they're in such weird lane composition. They're accomplishing such strange goals for five minutes into the game. Loud Mortis single-handedly is Jungle Nunu pushing like three whole waves of minions into the bottom lane turret, which is where Wings of Death is going. So I don't exactly know, but there was a brief pause there. So uh, let's see, Turtle's internet apparently was lagging. So uh, Wild Turtle having a few issues uh, with uh, AP Janna. Uh, apparently his internet was fixed and no longer runs <laughs> like Turtles, which are slow as iNubish is uh, sharing with us. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Demon Lull almost got that last proc off, and that means that Demon Lull has a uh, amazing presence top lane. That's the thing about Vayne. Like once you get those two stacks of silver bolts on you, you know, hey, if I continue to trade this, it's gonna go way in my opponent's favor. So uh, good job by Don't Mash Me to walk out of there and avoid that, uh, at least for the time being. Now Salsa doing a really good job of versus Cruiser. Uh, Rumble, like I was talking about earlier, a really really strong champion. Now that a all of the procs from his Flame Spitter do hit and. Uh, just tons and tons of damage. I believe it was likened unto the full damage from Fiddlestick's Crowstorm on about a seven second cooldown. So I don't know exactly how fair and balanced that is, but uh, they're definitely reverting it in the next patch to sort of unbuff that to uh, quote unquote bring it back into line, which always means uh, relatively strong changes in that respect. And there is the jump coming down from Pantheon, catching Cruiser the Bruiser off onto, the, well, pretty much the exact wrong direction. Now he's turning around all the also, I feel like he could get the kill off, and he will with the last tick of Flame Spitter. He's actually still alive. Loud Mortis slows Unstoppable Lex. The heal comes in from my Noobish, coming all the way down from top lane. And oh my goodness, that was uh, slightly close, if you want to call it that. Cruiser the Bruiser able to pick up the kill on Salsa and get out of there alive. Really great play there on Rumble. So I don't know if that's uh, planned or if at this elo you can uh, just do that on command, but uh, this guy's pretty good at the game, in case you guys didn't know. Meanwhile, Wings of Death left bottom lane to kind of free farm it up as Warwick. And uh, in case you guys are wondering a little bit about the team comp that uh, TSM Evo is running, they're going uh, for kind of a suppression hard CC team comp where you got the suppression on Warwick's uh, ultimate, you got uh, the ultimate from Impale on Unstoppable Legs, you got the stun from Salse, also the AoE stun from Nat, and uh, it's a lot of CC to deal with. Now, it uh, looks like Loud Mortis is waiting patiently in this bottom brush, looking to uh, grab some of the CC that Wild Turtle has to offer. I wonder if they're just like, hey, we need somebody that play can play Janna, and Wild Turtle definitely up for the job. Uh, Loud Mortis running in there, getting immediately suppressed out of his ult, and uh, it was just there's just not enough damage here on Wings of Death to be able to do anything other than run away as soon as Unstoppable comes into play. Now, a little bit of juking around the wall. I'm not sure why he was going one way or another, but uh, Wild Turtle is kind of waiting patiently. Unstoppable waiting equally patiently, and now he's going to come up around Wild Turtle. What is Wild Turtle going to do? How is he going to handle this? Gets the knock up on Wings of Death, ults to push them backwards. Salsa is here, but uh, oh my goodness, gets the stun off and will pick up the kill on Wild Turtle, making it 4-2. to two. Already four kills picked up for uh, for Team Legion. Doing a really good job, not necessarily with a new lineup, but uh, Wild Turtle definitely uh, doing really good in both a non-standard role in a non-standard lane. Usually you see bottom lane and top lane kind of try to switch it up depending on how they want to play their advantages and things like that. But uh, Wild Turtle having to move down to bottom versus the top laner. So just crazy lanes all over the place. Look at Cruiser the Bruiser's damage as Double Doran's shields walks on Salsa and just completely melts him. Now he's going to go for a Brutalizer, but is that really the uh, best option here versus Rumble? How much gold does he have? He has about 600, so he could go for a uh, Null Magic Mantle if he wanted to go rush a, uh, a hex tech, uh, not a hex tech, but a hex drinker. Uh, instead, he just says, "Hey, man, I'm going man mode." He's playing Mantheon, the manliest of all champions, and we'll be just picking up that brutalizer for additional attack damage and armor penetration. 
That's uh, item definitely cost leaf gold for a reason. Now Nubish looking to go in there. He had a little bit of a poke, but instead gets poked himself. However, a little bit unaccounted for is this Rumble ult. Now a lot of damage showing down onto Demon Low, but oh my goodness, Mantheon drops it on top of absolutely everything. Unstoppable X is down there. Will it be enough? It does he have a pale up? No, it does not. He's up. It's down for about 30 more seconds, but Demon Low has nowhere to go. He will go down. Salsa taking a lot of damage once again from Cruise of the Bruiser. Now he is in the danger zone. Can dish out a lot of damage with that flame spitter. Look at it just melting. Unstoppable's health. There comes in the stun from Tarek and Lana Mortis will be enough to pick up the kill. Now they're actually going to jump in here on the Don't Mash me. Will they have enough damage? Yes, they will. Cruise of the Bruiser picks it up with an Electro Harpoon over the wall and Salsa is just like, uh, so my team is made out of butter because they're melting all around me. He's going to get the stun off onto Anubish, but will Anubish go down? No. Just not enough damage. Here comes in Wings of Death for the end one, forcing the flash away from Lada Mortis. Now Wings of Death jumping into the middle of the enemy team. Will he actually have enough damage and or health to be able to sustain through all this? Rumble is silenced, but he's going in there with the Flame Spitter. Doesn't want to die turn as Nat shows up. Is he level 6? Yes, he does have his crescendo, but uh, it is not on cooldown. Or off of cooldown, rather. And it's, uh, that takes you through... Excuse me, about the first 10 minutes of this game, which is shaping up to be absolutely ridiculous. Just non-stop action. Demon Lone now facing Wings of Death and Nat top lane. So I'm just like, hey, who's going where? I don't know. A little bit of an interesting build choice. Rumble picking up Haunting Guys. That's a little that's a little bit of a reaction to exactly how strong a Cruise of the Bruiser, or rather Rumble, is at this stage in the game. Once you hit mid-game and you start to get things like Magic Penetration Boots and Haunting Guys, you're basically A, dealing true damage, and B, dealing ridiculous amounts of it. And there's just nothing that can stand up to that. It's not going to be Salsa, that's for sure. Let's take a look at his Magic Resistance. He has, oh wait, 55 of it. And now, there are a lot of uh, really strong mid-lane Pantheon builds. If you guys have ever heard of Arc Angeloid, the only mid-Pantheon player... He only plays, uh, what, which Malphite, or uh, which Pantheon skin does he play? Full Metal, Full Metal Pantheon, and, uh, he destroys fools at that role. I don't know how that works or how he just, like, randomly woke up one day and thought, hey, I'm gonna play Pantheon against mid players for thousands of games, and he definitely has about, uh, I think he actually has uh, about 700 or 800 games played as mid Pantheon, and it's just like, hey, I'm going to destroy absolutely everybody, and he definitely does. If you ever get a chance to see him featured on the featured games list at the front of the client, check him out. He's absolutely ridiculous. Speaking of ridiculous, look at this damage that Cruiser the Bruiser's putting out on Salsa. He almost just, like, straight up full combo him, and I believe if he had dropped uh, the equalizer did uh, he have flash up yeah so Salsa would have been able to flash that but still a good trade as it is uh, you know, a longer cooldown that you're training for a shorter one. A uh, wild turtle versus wings of death. There's the ult and the uh, oh my goodness, that's so much damage. Look at this AP build coming out from Warwick. I mean, it's not usually it's not uh, expected to see Lanewick ever. Usually, you see more of a tank Warwick uh, build. It's a little bit like Lane Nunu in that respect. But uh, this is in fact Jungle Nunu already has triple gold for fives. Looking to buy an Oracle's Elixir extremely soon. Wild turtles having a few issues now. He's 0 and 3 versus. Uh, Probably one of the harder snowballers in lane. I'm actually going to decline that. Thank you very much. I forgot that I forgot to put that on Do Not Disturb. So, unfortunately, uh, we may have to deal with a few pings. But, what we will not have to deal with, what we will not, mm, if I can keep my voice from cracking for about two seconds, is uh, deal with, well, Wings of Death losing his lane anytime soon. He's got Double Door and his rings and looking for a wit's end next. Uh, at least I believe that's going to be the pickup for him. While Demon Lull just freezes the turret near his turret, or freezes the lane near his turret. There's a pink ward drop by Nubish in this little tiny bush of awesomeness. Will it catch any of the ward coverage? No, it will not. Uh, so we're going to have to wait until we see Nunu grab at Oracles for all of these wards top lane to get cleared out. Now, Pink's going into the brush, but uh, what is actually more important is looking mid lane. As Salsa is just, you know, kind of chilling out here. But what is he going to find out there? Loud of finds Unstoppable, pops his ultimate. So absolutely zero jumping in there onto unstoppable while he drags cruiser the bruiser into the turret but oh my goodness cruiser just says hey man i actually deal ridiculous amounts of damage and uh noobish joining latimortis mid lane says hey i can uh i can deal with that and uh just you know support you amicably on his team so noobish actually going for a little bit of a controversial build heart of gold first before that philosopher's stone i really hate that build now just because hey you're spending 350 gold 
for yes gold for fives but also an additional 20 health so if you got the gold burn then fine go for it but uh speaking of things that are about to be burning demon lol inching forward that's gonna be a slow power cord the all coming out from don't mash me but demon lol getting an excellent cleanse flash to make it out of their alive so definitely has some moves and whether or not they are jagger like he did in fact get out of there with his life he uh does he have enough for a bf sword yes he does so vein right on track with the build and really it's about when you go back if you go back anytime between 10 to 15 minutes and pick up your bf sword the 10s on the other side 15s on the late side anytime in between there and you're basically right on track cruise the bruiser has actually picked up basically everything he needs as about 60 ap when you get to the 25 and then the magic penetration for both of those it's actually going to be ridiculous because if you check out the magic penetration that he does have he's up at 50 just like straight up 50 with that straight 10 percent from offensive masteries cruise the bruiser knows the old, he is a, he wants to cool down so he's finally gonna pop flame spitter i don't know how to describe the level of hurt that uh don't match me just felt uh, in some small areas of his rectal region but i'm gonna hit v again so we can see the whole map i want to give you a little bit of an interesting perspective from the members of team legion and uh, the only thing that you saw from their perspective was cruiser just completely destroying absolutely everything in his path now he's walking behind the turret he wants to go for the dives here but uh as he has uh the equalizer available it does not get any special heat uh, adjustments it just uh, costs well basically nothing you drop it whenever you want and the rest of team legion is here around the middle turret they definitely want to get something done here they're already taking the middle the outer turret they're going for the secondary turret but no they're backing out they're just going to send demon little to take the last few hits of cs and uh, then roll on up towards top lane well at least that's what cruising the bruiser is going to do the rest of his team is just kind of chilling around i don't really think uh, actually i think this is one of those awkward stages during the middle of the game where you're like okay so people are doing stuff and it's pretty cool but uh, not a whole lot happening and so you guys are gonna have to bear with a little bit of the more interesting facets of the game let's take a little bit of time to uh, sort of uh, micro our way back out to the macro standpoint of the game how are people doing on items gold and builds well if, uh, if wings of death doesn't make too many epic plays then we're actually uh, going to be able to see that wild turtle is getting absolutely destroyed by all of that ability power built on warwick not traditionally an AP champion, but when built that way, has a lot of things that uh, definitely make him worthwhile. Uh, have 117 CS to 96. Top lane, and Cruiser the Bruiser looking to micro against Don't Match Me. Gets one kill. He's sustaining, but does not have any form of spell vamp, which means that he does go down to Nat Win. And uh, looks like uh, Cruiser the Bruiser actually bit off a little bit more than he could chew. Nubish looking to go in there onto Nat. Wild Turtle picks up the kill as Nubish takes the turret with the greatest of ease. And uh, then everything dies as Wild Turtle's uh, Tempest does go off. Howling Gale picking up. Uh, 160 plus 94, so that's uh, about 270 damage if I cannot do math. It's actually about uh, 200 damage if you do things correctly. I'm never, ever doing math again. 250. That sounds better. Awesome. So Wings of Death looking to do the divings, but uh, as Wild Turtle is uh, not quite wild enough, will just channel his B button and actually hit up. No, he's not going to go for that. He's actually going to stay here. Wild or Wings of Death could just destroy Wild Turtle instantaneously. Has Ignite, has Ultimate, and when you pop both of those on anyone, they're gonna have a bad time. Uh, it looks like a uh, Nubish and a Wild Turtle know this, but Cruiser the Bruiser picks up a needlessly large rod. I don't care what boots you have, how much magic resist. Wings of Death is going to. Oh my goodness, Cruiser actually gets dragged into the middle of the enemy team. Does he have his equalizer available? There's the heal. Will it be enough? Cruiser lives for just a brief second. Wings of Death flashing onto him. And now Nubish is actually in a lot of trouble. Will the stun come up in time for Salsa? No. But man, Cruiser just getting taken out there. That's what happens when you go for things like ridiculous amounts of ability power instead of going for tankiness and or spell vamp which both of both of which would have helped cruiser in that team fight however he did pick up one kill so trading one wait did he i don't think so yeah he might have just grabbed one of those i'm actually going to have to uh stop my annoying skype from uh trolling me too too hard and i will be right back so there we go setting it to do not disturb and we're back 
Hopefully I don't have to edit this too much, but what I do not have to edit is the amazing performance coming out of Team Legion. Like, if you guys haven't heard of Team Legion too much, they're formerly known as Team Reflex, uh, one of the earliest and strongest uh, League of Legends teams uh, during the inception of the professional League of Legends scene. But uh, they have recently uh, joined Team Legion. Well, not recently. They've been there for a few months or so and uh, wonderfully sponsored by the epic Team Razor and uh, actually placing really well, doing extremely well in the uh, online tournaments like the GG Classic and uh, things like TSM Invitational and uh, Absolute Legends League Pedia Tournament, I believe. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're a really strong team, but uh, as of late have been having some, not necessarily roster issues, but needing to uh, get a little bit done, but uh, nothing wrong with their roster this time around. You see every single person fulfilling exactly the role that they were designed to fill and doing it extremely well. You got 3-1 on the jungle Loud Mortis. Uh, who's been with the team since its very inception. Uh, mid laner used to be Prolly, but uh, after he kind of left the team, they've definitely been in the mood for a new one. And it looks like Wild Turtle, I'm not sure if this performance is necessarily indicative of everything that he has to offer, but definitely uh, you know, working well under pressure and doing a really good job at that. We're going to hit Backspace just to check out exactly how dead he was while I was talking about him. I probably should have been highlighting him. I'm not sure why that Zephyr just took a little bit of a U-turn, but Unstoppable going to be able to get in here. There is the one suppression. We're going to see a second suppression. And uh, amidst all of that damage, I'm not sure if there's anything you can do about that, but just say, ah, all right, guys, you got me. Double suppression ults, uh, one of them on about a 100 second cooldown, which winds up being about a minute or less, depending on Skarner's auto attacks, which do proc his passive, which does give him lower cooldowns. Uh, looks like uh, with all of the uh, CDR, actually, what CDR is Wounds of Death running? He just has the four from the uh, offense mastery. Looks like plays are about to be made on the Loud Mortis, but no, Demon Lull comes around the corner, a little bit of an early slow. There is the ult coming out from Sona. Salse, all thing in, Wings of Death looking to go down, but Salse has to flash away almost immediately as the rest of Team Legion just way too strong rushing down on the Wings of Death who just drops like a fly. The rest of Team Legion able to get out of there alive and now they could actually uh, either A, rush a Desperation Baron, B, uh, just uh, return to pushing things down and it looks like the Baron buff will be the option. Latimortis has his tree damage passive from, well not passive, but a Q4 consume and with all the damage the Cruise of the Bruiser has to offer, 144 ability power with ridiculous amounts of spell penetration. It looks like it's combined with the true damage procs from Demon Lull. They have an extremely strong Baron team. Now, I don't really think TSM Evo knows that this is actually possible for them to do right now. You see Skarner just kind of taking down Raze, and that is the Baron buff taken at 21 minutes into the game for Team Legion. They're going to roll back out in the mid lane, and all of a sudden, TSM Evo is going to be like, hey, uh, hey, guys. Baron buff, it's uh, it's not there anymore, and it is actually on all of Team Legion. Nobody dead for that one, so that's gonna be uh, the strongest possible team composition. 455 damage crits coming off of just a zeal with that Bloodthirster engaged. So, I don't know, guys. Demon Lull definitely doing some work. He's sitting at 2 and 1 with 150 farm. Whereas, if you check out Don't Mash Me, who I definitely haven't talked about in a little bit of a while, he's going for the Trinity Force first build. I'm not sure I really like that. Usually, it's best to get like a Double Doran's Phage on a Don't Mash or on a Ezreal just so that you're ridiculously tanky. Have some chasing power if you land that Phage proc. And then also have, you know, the Double Doran's. To, uh, continue to uh, make you as tanky as possible. But with all the shenanigans that happened earlier on in lane, I definitely like uh, the idea to get more Trinity Force capable items uh, just because, hey, it does give you a lot more versatility, a lot more options, but when you're behind, possibly not the greatest uh, item to go for uh, as far as that's concerned. Now, uh, it looks like Team Legion will be pressing their advantage with Baron buff, clearing out these waves. Look at how fast Wild Turtle clears those waves. I am uh, slightly impressed by that. They do need to get an Oracles over here around the corner to clear out that ward, because otherwise they will get ulted over the wall. You can actually ult over thin walls with Skarner ult. Uh, hilarity ensues, but uh, what is also going to ensue is the rest of Team Legion pressing in here onto the secondary turret. There's nothing that, uh, I almost said mono because I was looking at Don't Mash Me, there's nothing that TSM Evo is going to be able to accomplish here other than uh, just giving up their turret and making the best out of the bad situation that they find themselves in. They're just kind of waiting out Baron buff. They want to make the best uh, that they can out of this, but uh, they're just going to have to give up turrets after turrets. Wild Turtle going over here and pr pushing with the best of uh, his ability, and 
and uh, it does look like uh, at least one more turret is in the works here for Team Legion. Now there's the the uh, Ezreal ult coming out trying to kill off all these minions, but uh, at least a little bit. Oh my goodness, one Electro Harpoon did that to Salse. So yeah, it's a fair modicum of damage if you guys... Uh you guys agree then uh definitely uh point that out unstoppable x getting chunked there could have actually gotten taken down with a little bit of extra divings but instead team legion just to be like hey man we can keep doing that all day long and it's actually like seven uh it's like 10 30 at night so uh definitely no more day left in the day but uh plenty of time left on this uh, exalted baron nasher buff uh for the rest of uh team legion to push in onto what could be their first base turret of the game Uh, taking a little bit of a water break as uh, solo casting is a little bit rough, but uh, something that's also pretty rough is 13 and 8. Not the big enough, not the biggest kill differential, but is what is really making the difference is where these kills are stacked up. You have a 7 and 2 rumble with insane amounts of magic penetration and, oh wait, a death cap. He's going to be going for something along the lines of an abyssal scepter to uh, make it true damage no matter what the case. and uh, or, or possibly even like a void staff for even more penetration. But to be honest, he doesn't really need it. Could just build something tanky like a Rylize. Uh, and to be honest, I would not, that would definitely be a great idea just because of how kind of squishy he is. Once you get this far ahead you kind of want to build a tanky item or two just because uh just to ensure that you are around to do as much amazing damage as humanly possible because you do have that adv advantage where you have enough damage to where you can afford to build those tanky items without it costing your damage too too much it looks like a uh, wild turtle first to pop his ult to get away from don't bash me that with that red buff and phage proc slow uh, was able to uh, catch wild turtle who actually went uh, support items this time around what's shirelia's and will of the ancients so i'm actually pretty intrigued to see that I'm not exactly sure all of the uh, myriad of builds that you can go on AP Janna. If you guys want to know, then definitely uh, go check out the rune pages and or advice. Also, the stream of Fornot's Zekent, uh, formerly known as Spam Happy, plays a lot of AP mid Janna, AP top Janna, and basically Janna in all the places as he does play support as well. But it does look like after Baron buff running out, uh, the rest of Team Legion says, hey man, we got enough of an advantage, enough of a gold advantage that is off of that last push to where now we can do pretty much whatever we want. You remember I was talking about Rumble going a little bit tankier? Uh, Cruise of the Bruiser says, what if instead I bought a Blasting Wand for 314 ability power? And uh, to that I say, oh my goodness, save the children. And also uh, apparently your wives and husbands because uh, Cruise of the Bruiser will definitely be uh, doing things to anyone he can get his hands out that hands on that are quite insanely appropriate so uh it looks like we're just gonna see legion doing a little bit of epic juking they uh baited team uh, or tsm evo rather over behind their their primary turrets uh, mid lane definitely wanted to defend that but with the initiate here we're gonna get a stun we're gonna get one suppression but so much damage latimore is channeling his entire ultimate picking up one kill cruiser the bruiser slaying uh unstoppable x and just the counter initiate now will fall sauce they sacrifice himself for the good of the team and with wings of death in there as well super tanky but is it enough no it is not mash me just uh, incapable of doing enough damage to matter only has trinity force available there is the snowball sausage just leaves the game so apparently yeah this is a little bit of a uh, one-sided victory nat leaves the game and the rest of team legion will probably be piecing out of here as soon as they kill off the nexus so that was a little bit of a GG's going on, and uh, Salsley always the first person to leave the game, but uh, never the first person to uh, die. I guess, yeah, that is GG, as uh, Unstoppable, yeah, is already gone. So uh, pretty much everybody from TSM Evo pieced out of the game. Looks like everybody else will be leaving. So thanks for watching, guys. You won't get to see the Nexus explode, but uh, victory has been claimed here by Team Legion. The game ended without a result. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, seeing a little bit of the new lineup for both TSM Evo and getting to see Legion once again as as well so thanks for watching leave a comment down below leave your thoughts let me uh, know what you guys thought of this game I like my video uh, i guess that's expressed by thumbsing up it if that's a word but uh, also subscribe to my youtube channel helps out and uh, definitely helps me interact with all of you guys and thanks for watching i hope you guys enjoyed it let me know what you thought and i will see you guys in the next scrim thanks for watching peace out